Good morning, Miami, and uh, welcome to uh, Miami's Community Newspapers. We are uh, here at Solid Waste uh, with Frank Calderon, the Communications Manager of uh, Miami-Dade County uh, Solid Waste Management. Uh, how are you doing today? All right, I'm doing good, thanks. It's good to hear. So uh, we're here to talk about uh, illegal dumping, littering, throwing trash out that shouldn't be thrown out where it is uh, in Miami and, and how that can affect the community, how it can be a detriment to uh, to to our neighborhoods. Um, so the first question is uh, illegal dumping. So that's a very specific term. Most people think about littering when, when they think about throwing trash out. Uh, what's the difference? Well, uh, legally, the the law that covers it is a Florida litter law, so technically it's it's a form of littering. Uh, but most people, and that includes our department, we t tend to consider litter to be smaller items, uh, something as small as a gum wrapper. You know, somebody pops a piece of gum in their mouth and then they toss the wrapper on the ground, or maybe like they're ha having a fast food drink and they want to pop the lid off, and then throw the, and they'll throw the lot the lid in the straw on the floor and just drink the what's left of their drink from the cup straight. Uh, but illegal dumping, we think of it in terms of larger items, typically, you know, something that uh, you need to bring in a vehicle. You can't just walk around with it. Uh, it could be old boxes. It could be old furniture. It could be old appliances. Um, it could be construction uh, debris. And those, those are a lot of the different items. It could even be a boat, <laughs> which we've had and wow. uh, recently actually had. Okay, so, you know, it, it, it tends to be bigger items that you can't really carry by hand. So let me ask you this. Sometimes if there's an old couch that you don't need anymore and stuff, people will leave it out on their front lawn for someone to come by and, and pick it up and take it for themselves. Is that also qualified under the illegal well, dumping? Well, um, you know, if it's on private property, our code enforcement officers won't uh, go after you. But uh, there's another county department, RER, that will um, if you leave it on, on your property. Once you put it on the, on the curb, we could come out. Um, now, what you can do is if you're one of our customers, you can call for a bulky waste pickup and, and they'll pick it up for you. And, you know, there's it's by appointment now. You have to set up an appointment. You pick the specific date and then uh, they give you three days in advance where you can put the stuff out. But uh, but, yeah, just putting it out, hoping somebody will just come magically take it away can result in getting a fine for illegal dumping. I see. OK, so folks. Watch out for that, especially if you're at home and you're, you know, redoing the house and, and changing out some of the furniture for something new. Um, do be careful with that. Um, so the next question that I have is that is Miami-Dade County experiencing a, an illegal dumping problem? Is there uh, are some areas particularly affected more than others? Is this countywide? Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Unfortunately, yes, we do have uh, quite a bit of illegal dumping and it is countywide. Um, there's not like one particular area of town that gets it. It's various places just because the people that do it tend to be in various places. Um, you know, we sometimes find that people dump illegally dump as, as close as a block from their house from where they live, which is kind of bizarre to me because why would you want to see <laughs> the thing that you dumped every day when you drive? <laughs> And we've seen people drive in, drive up, drive down from Broward to, um, you know, wow, to illegally dump here. Um, so it's 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 a mix. It's just it's it's all over the place, unfortunately. How do the how do the police departments uh, uh, handle that? Does Broward go in and try to track down the the person that came down to Miami Dade to dump, or uh, do we go out to Broward and and try to uh, talk to them about that? Uh, no, what we do is we, you know, we investigate. Um, we we have our own code enforcement people. They t they tend to start the investigation and they'll get most of the legwork done. If it's a case that would warrant possible arrest, then we hand it off to the uh, Miami Dade uh, Police Department, the illegal dumping unit. Which I, I like to point out the fact that there is an illegal dumping unit, which means they are our police officers dedicated to arresting people doing this. Wow, specific. Uh, um, specific infraction um, and uh, a lot of times what they'll end up doing is they'll contact they'll find out who it is they'll contact them they'll have them come down and then you know I, I, I don't know the, the, the you know all the fun I don't think a Miami-Dade Police Department police officer would go into Broward and, and affect an arrest for example I don't think it would get to that point right but they, they what they'll do is they'll contact them have them come down for an interview whatever and then at that point they'll make the arrest if it's if it's warranted otherwise they can you know find them so arrest that's a that's a very extreme well yes. some might consider it uh, a very um 
draconic method uh, in in handling that sort of crime. What differentiates? How does how does a police officer or the county decide what's something that is arrestable versus just hand them a fine? Well, okay, so not knowing the, the full wording of the uh, state statute uh, off the top of my head, um, I don't know the exact, I don't know what the cutoff point is, but typically when it's more serious cases, either, you know, large items or an excessive amount of items, or typically what we consider commercial, which would be somebody doing it uh, on, beha- uh, on the behest of their own business rather than, you know, the guy who uh, bought a new TV set and he's got to get rid of the old one, just dumps it off the side of the road. That okay. person might get a fine and may not necessarily get arrested, but... The guy who does, uh, you know, construction work or whatever and uh, charges the customer, say, uh, to properly dispose of the items that then decides he wants to pocket that extra money that they charge the customer and decides to dump it. That's the kind of person that may end up getting arrested. Interesting. So if, if you dump a boat in the middle of, that this, you know, some lot that could we result in We have a case arrest. recently that uh, the person got arrested. Wow. Dumping a boat, yeah. Interesting. Um, so how does the the county fight that because as you said it's something that miami-dade county has been experiencing as an issue uh, across the county so there's a lot of different cases that are going around all over the place we're talking about multiple police departments from pinecrest coral gables hialeah uh, aventura all the way down to homestead and um how do you guys uh, uh combat that uh well we do a couple different things one of them is we have a public education campaign that we call dirty crimes carry fines uh, we have had, uh, we've run billboards, we've run uh, bus ads, um, and different uh, other types of ads. I believe we may have run a, a few ads, in fact, in the community newspapers um, for that. Um, you know, we also run the, the campaign a bit on our social media because we have some videos. Um, and then, of course, we have the, you know, that's, that's I guess you could call that the, the carrot. Then there's the stick, uh, which is uh, enforcement. We have um, a unit, uh, a whole division or a department of dedicated uh, enforcement officers. And off the top of my head, I don't know many, how many. It's in the range of 30, 30 plus uh, officers who each have their own respective zones. And uh, they will investigate, um, you know, uh, any case of illegal dumping. Um, and they have various tools. And then they, they work with the police department, of course, as well. They have various tools at their disposal. Sometimes they see people dump right in front of them. <laughs> which is amazing, especially when they're in a marked county vehicle. Other times uh, they have to go and they'll look through the pile and they'll find evidence of where it may be. And it may not be direct evidence. I'll give you an example. We had a case um, where um, there was construction debris and we found items uh, in, 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 in the debris that showed a specific address. So they went to that address. It was a home. They knocked on the homeowner's door. The homeowner said, um, it wasn't me, but I had somebody do work. And they sh- this is, this is the key. They showed an invoice from the company, and the invoice wrote, written on it said that they would dispose of the items for them, or dispose of the debris. Uh, so they went back to that company, and sure enough, they found that, yes, that company wow. did, as I gave them. And, and, and I don't want to pick on contractors, because not all of them do this, but unfortunately, there's a few bad apples, as there are anywhere else. And uh, in this case, there was this one bad apple, and this person ended up at least with a fine, I don't remember if the case ended up with an arrest, but this is how they caught them, and this was without cameras. And then there's places where we have hidden cameras. We have some. The police department has some. And uh, there have been cases where we, you know, they caught a, uh, a still camera, maybe not video, but they caught a partial tag, and we caught the other part. Wow. <laughs> so, boom, put put them together, and when we caught the, the person that did it. That's incredible. So That's that is. We have a lot of tools. So, So the first thing that I'll talk about that you mentioned was that it looks like illegal dumping is done by both an individual person. Someone just goes out independently and, and decides to get rid of some garbage that they don't want anymore. And then also the construction side, company side, some businesses might, might uh, mm-hmm. partake in that sort of practice. Um, do the, does the county charge and find the business or the, the individuals that were responsible for the illegal dumping. Let's say the, the business claims that, oh, we weren't aware that our employees were, is that something that ends That's up having to get question. Um, prosecuted? But it is considered, it is considered, um, uh, it is considered uh, commercial, um, even if it's an individual using it. Once you use a commercial vehicle, we had a case where it was an individual clearly doing it, but they rented a uh, moving truck, a U-Haul, and couldn't get, we couldn't get the person. They Somehow they managed to cover the tag, but there was another car in the video, a girlfriend's car. 
<laughs> so we went after the girlfriend, and we held her responsible. She, we, we couldn't obviously affect an arrest in her case. Right. Um, because you, you see the boyfriend dumping a ton of stuff out of the back of the truck. But she was she had to pay a commercial fine, which you're talking now more. I think the fine started about 250 or so. The, the, for commercial, it's, I think, 1000 or up and up. Wow. That's... So she had a big fine and all to protect her boyfriend. You know, that's dedication. What, what can I say? <laughs> you know, she ended up paying a hefty fine, four-figure fine. Because, find uh, find you a girl that will pay a $1,000 fine for you. you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know. So, so that that is... Quite a price tag to have to pay. So these things are are no joke. The county takes them very, very seriously. And some people might even start to ask, well, why? You know, what is what is so bad about going to some random empty lot that no one's using anyway and throwing away something that, who knows, someone might come by and pick it up because they see it and they like it. You know, like some some old couch that, that they think they might be able to, you know, clean up and, and put up at the house. What significance does this have towards the community uh well there's quite a few things going on uh one thing you mentioned a couch well um i know april traditionally and this goes harkens back to my old water and sewer days april traditionally is one of the driest months of the year uh in miami Dade county but this year has been quite the exception mm -hmm. uh if you put a couch out in this weather <laughs> that's true <laughs> i don't care if it's leather or cloth fabric Nobody's going to want it. For the, so that's one thing. <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember years and years ago, Volkswagen did a commercial uh, where these guys are driving around and they find this old like chair that somebody left lying and they, they took it. I guess they were roommates and they took it. They put it in the back of the Volkswagen. They're driving around. And after a few minutes, they go. Oof. And they were like, oh, they got rid of the chair. Yeah, a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they got rid of the chair because it's. Well, yeah. Garbage so mountain got smell. That going right on, but it's an eyesore. It looks ugly. Um, it's it's a pollutant um, in addition to looking ugly because we've had it like in places that are kind of like still wooded um, like on the edge of maybe like suburbs or whatever well the people who live in the area don't like it because it's it's close to their houses even if it's kind of like tucked away in behind the trees but it's still it's it's it, it's you know it's environmentally bad um, and it's it's just it's ugly it's an eyesore and you know if, for somebody who's like you said, a vacant lot, but it's a private it's private property, and they end up having to be responsible in some cases uh, for having to remove stuff like this. It's not fair to them. It's like you know now they have to, in addition to you know having to pay, they they pay property taxes on a property even if it's vacant. Now they have to, on top of that, they have to clean it up every few months because uh, somebody or several people, because it may not be the same person, come and decide that they're going to use it as a dump. That's not fair to them. So yeah, that's, that is true, there. and so. Let's say for the neighborhood uh, house owners, uh, people just driving by and they see these sorts of things being dumped on the side of the road, uh, what can they do to help the, the county uh, uh, deal with the situation? Well, the first thing we do is you, if you're seeing people actually doing it in the act, don't confront them because you don't know what they're, how they're going to react. Um, and you don't want to get, you don't want to put yourself or, or any of your passengers or anybody who's with you in danger. What you can do if you see it in the act is call 911, call the police, because it is a crime. Um, and uh, they'll have somebody come out and if they catch them in the act. If it, whatever information you can get is going to be helpful. Uh, an auto tag is going to be, pff, that's going to be with that, forget it. Most people are gone. <laughs> but uh, if you can't get the auto tag, the a description of the vehicle, a description of any people who have come out, and what they're wearing, what they look like, things like that, and, of course, the location. And, um, you know, that'll help. Now, if it's after the fact, if you don't see the people, if you just see a pile of stuff, call 311. And okay. they'll send one of our enforcement officers out to check it out. And they may gotcha. find something in there that, that'll give them the evidence uh, to catch the people that did it. Yeah. Or there may be a hidden camera there that they don't know about. That our people know about, but the, the person calling doesn't know about it, and they may catch them that way. So. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, <clears throat> and you guys are certainly uh, uh, working hard at it. So it's, it's good to see that you guys are taking care of the community, you know, keeping it clean. Um, the, the other thing that I, I do want to touch on today is um, uh, something that's occurred recently with all this heavy rain that we've been having in April. It's been a lot of flooding, especially in the Broward, Fort Lauderdale area. And I know that some of these storm drains, uh, sewage that, that's supposed to be able to uh, clean out all that water can get clogged. Can illegal dumping affect that sort of uh, drainage? Sure, illegal dumping is not the main cause of clogging drains, but it can... It can contribute for sure, especially if, if you're dumping if you're dumping it right on top of the storm drain, because uh, sometimes the storm drains have 
you know, maybe a grassy swale, and then you have where the storm drain in is there's pavement around it, and it's just kind of like people prefer to, prefer to put it on there. I don't know, um, as opposed to putting it on grass. Um, that can contribute, um, you know, even if, if, if the pile isn't placed directly on top of a storm drain, if it's a place close by, some of the items could wash out in heavy rain and, and clog the drain. Um, you know, we find from my time when we were merged with Public Works, uh, a lot of the stuff is, is vegetation, but there's all kinds of stuff that blocks the, the drains, like, you know, people with palm fronds and stuff. Um, and that's sometimes, those types of things are sometimes illegally dumped as well, like people do landscaping work or whatever, and or the land, the landscaper, an unscrupulous landscaper may dump it <laughs> off in a place, you know, where they think, okay, nobody's going to catch me or whatever. That sort of thing can tends to clog the drain. And then, of course, if you add in other stuff uh, that's illegally dumped, it's it can make right. the, the clog worse. And it can. That's another uh, going back to the question you asked before about the, you know, what's what are some of the problems with illegal dumping? This is another problem that can illegal dumping can. Uh, contribute to is clogged storm drains and then you get fl street flooding or the street flooding becomes worse the flooding can if it's bad enough it can get into people's houses yeah. where where if the strain if the drain was clear that wouldn't be a problem but well not only that but if there's flooding all of the stuff that's been then dumped around starts floating around the middle of the street in the middle it, of the city it and it's it, heavier it, it could float around like you said uh couches can stink <laughs> <laughs> yeah as we mentioned earlier boats uh, famously designed to float especially it can hold if mosquitoes flooding. that's another because we also have mosquito control oh, for that's you. Right. Uh, depending on the items that are, that are illegally dumped mosquitoes could if they hold water and they hold it for a long enough time period about a week or so Mosquitoes can breed in that. So that becomes yet another issue. Something I didn't mention before, besides mosquito, all other types of vermin, rats, whether that, you know, regardless of the flooding with illegal dumping, rats or whatever, wow. snakes, other animals can uh, say, oh, look, a home, <laughs> and go <laughs> so, and move in there. And that, so that this be a just problem. becomes, this just becomes a domino effect of problems. It yes, gets, yes. It becomes a problem if there's flooding, if there's raining, if there's mosquitoes, if there's rats. Um, if it starts clogging up the drain, starts making flooding worse. Yes, uh, yes. So this this is it makes the neighborhood look bad. Uh, this is this is not great. I can now it's starting to, to become pretty clear why the county why the county is is so invested in in handling this situation. So one of the things that you mentioned is um, hidden cameras. Do you guys set these up intentionally? Do you collaborate with the police for it? Do you work with local businesses, people that have security footage? Just on their own? Is that something you guys work with too? Well, we set up our own cameras in certain places, what we call hotspots, the areas that we know that tend to get a lot of illegal dumping. Um, although, like I said, it can happen almost anywhere. Um, and there's lots of different areas like that all over the county. Um, the police sometimes set up their own cameras. Sometimes we work with them and, you know, we don't put, like if they put their camera on this spot, we don't put our camera next to it. We may put it, you know, a, a, a short distance away. Um, I, to my knowledge, we haven't worked with private entities, private businesses and stuff like that that have, may have their own cameras, although I could see something like that happening and it would you know, probably be in the, in, in the business owner's best interest if they have a camera already and they catch somebody illegally dumping near them. They don't want dumping near their business. Um, they catch somebody. As a matter of fact, we had a case recently, of, um, uh, now that I think about it, that was actually on uh, Channel 7 about uh, somebody illegally dumping but into their dumpster. This is the, the twist. The business had, uh, they were in Doral, a uh, tea business, and uh, an illegal dumper came by and just, you know, but the, 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 they caught on video the, the illegal dumper, and there was a little bit of a miscommunication. We didn't, some, we somehow didn't get the video from them, but eventually we did, and, you know, and Channel 7 helped as well, and uh, you could see clearly on the, um, on the video the name of the business on the van. The guy dumped, apparently, um, dumped uh, a bunch of stuff like hydraulics and uh, things like that, hydraulic pumps and food, some stuff like that. I'm not sure which, you know, this is a tea business. They're not going to have that sort of thing. Filled the dumpster up uh, for the guy. Um, he tried contacting the business. It, it turned out from the Channel 7 story, the investigation they did, that the business owner had loaned the, uh, the van to his brother, and his brother did this, and he didn't know that his brother did this, and he said he's not going to let his brother use the van anymore. Um, after doing that, and the the business was was, was based in Broward. Interesting. And they, they drove all the way down to Doral to do this. Uh, wow. That, that guy drove all the way down to Doral to do the dumping. So talk about know, an investment. Yeah, but they had their own video camera. And they caught this, and that's really the that's really what turned everything. So so let me ask you this. So this guy, 
it took a bunch of hydraulic presses, some machinery, some heavy machinery, and dumped it into a dumpster. So why would that qualify as illegal dumping? Because it doesn't belong there. It's not, it's, it's not his dumpster for him to do that, not, number one. Number two, uh, the type of waste that's there. That now you're talking industrial waste and stuff like that, and that needs to be handled a certain way. That can't be handled with regular garbage. The garbage that the business owner pretty much had to do was, you know, excess tea, like maybe stale tea uh, items. He, they did all kinds of exotic teas, maybe paper waste, um, things of that nature, but not hydraulic fluid or things <laughs> or, or items that contain hydraulic fluid, which can potentially be hazardous and has to be treated, you know, differently. So, Gotcha. And then the speaking of... Um of different kinds of illegal dumping can, if let's say a landscaping company is doing some work on a house, trimming some trees, cutting some branches, can the the vegetation that they dispose of, if they do not do it properly, can that also qualify as illegal dumping? If they don't dispose of it properly, yes. If they go and they dump it somewhere else. Now with landscapers, there's a couple of different things that happen. Uh, some of them will coordinate with the homeowner and the homeowner will call for a, bu- uh, call for a bulky waste pickup which now we do by appointment, so you have to kind of coordinate the appointment day when you have the landscaper come out. Uh, you're, you are given a three-day window of when you can put the items out. Uh, another thing is that landscapers are the only exception to businesses using our trash and recycling centers, our TRCs. Some people call them mini dumps. We don't like that word, but we call them <laughs> the, tri- the, tri- the TRCs. We have 13 of them. They're in different neighborhoods where you can bring small amounts of, of yard waste. You can bring old furniture. If you're our customer, uh, I can't tell you how many times our, our enforcement officers have said that they've caught people du- illegally dumping who didn't know that they had the right to use a TRC, which is a shame because now you're stuck paying a, f- a fine that you didn't have to pay if you would have gone and done it right and gone to one of the TRCs. The landscapers are allowed to buy coupons um, because we don't allow commercial entities to use TRCs, only residents that receive our service. But we make the exception for landscapers because they're in neighborhoods and to have them have to drive halfway across the county just to dump so they can go back out, you know, it, to be fair to them, that's a lot of, of time. So we, right. we have a special program where they buy coupons in advance. Every time they come to dump, they use a coupon. The coupons are like in the neighborhood of 25 something dollars uh, per coupon. They dump their, uh, their truck, usually a trailer that's not huge, but, you know, decent sized trailer they'll dump. And then they can, can go back out to their other customers that they have for the day. Um, so that's the one exception we make. Uh, as far as like not residential uh, for for use of the TRCs. Interesting. So what are some of the ways that if I have an old couch, I know, well, I know what my family does is whenever we change some old furniture out, what we do is we actually sell uh, on Facebook, you know, the old furniture. Someone will come to to pick it up. That way it's not sitting outside, you know, collecting dust, exposed to the elements, you know, wreaking up a bad smell and stuff. Uh, they'll come pick it up and and take it along with them. What are other ways? Let's say it's a broken TV. It's not functioning anymore. It's probably not going to sell on Facebook. Uh, what phone number can we call? Can we call the county to to come by and pick it up? Okay, with uh, items like that, um, well, an old couch for sure, you can call us for bulky waste pickup if you're our customer. Um, you can take it to a TRC if you want instead because uh, you only get two bulky waste pickups per year. Um, so, you know, it, it, you might, if you have a lot of items, then maybe it might be worth it to call for a bulky waste pickup, or you may decide you just don't want the single couch. If you, you can donate it, if it's still in good shape, uh, just don't let it sit in the rain and get stinky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. You probably couldn't sell it if you did that for sure. <laughs> Definitely um, not. Selling it is an option. There's different websites. You can use Facebook, Craigslist. Uh, there's other websites that you can use to sell. Um, if you want to do that, you can give it to a you know, charitable organization that's willing to use it, a neighbor that might want it. Um, it, it um, next door is another social media place where you see people selling stuff. Or if you, you can't sell it, you don't think you're getting a lot of money, you don't want it, you just want to get rid of it, maybe just for free, just put it on social media and have somebody come and take it and just get it off of your hands. But at least you're doing it the right way. You're doing it legally. You're not. Right. Uh, but you do have, if you are uh, our customer, if you get a garbage service from us, you have the option of either a bulky waste pickup or you have the option of uh, using one of the TRCs. So where can we find some of these uh, D or TRCs? T, TRCs, DRCs. Trash and Recycling Center. Yeah, TRCs. So where, where uh, let's say you're living in Pinecrest and Doral, right, the two separate neighborhoods. What are, what are some of the closest 
uh, DRC or TRCs they could they could well, go the to. Well, the good news is for those two municipalities, a lot of municipalities don't receive, but those two do receive service from us. So the the, the people who live there for the most part have full service, um, so they have uh, the option of, of going to one of our TRCs. You can call three one one to find the nearest location. Um, you can go uh, on our website miamiday.gov/solidwaste. And then off the top of my head, in Pinecrest, we have a TRC at Chapman Field. Um, they don't have full service there only because it's small. Uh, we do have a couple of other TRCs in the area. I think Eureka Drive, but it's not too far away from Pinecrest. Um, but I'm telling you this off of, don't trust my memory. I don't trust it. You shouldn't <laughs> trust it either. Call 311 to get the location nearest you um, or go visit our website, miamiday.gov slash solid waste. For Doral, you've got the closest one is the one at uh, FIU, which is in Sweetwater, actually, or like FIU, the Tamiami Park. Uh, Snapper Creek, or there's, if you're further north, there's um, Palm Springs North, uh, the TRC there. Um, but yeah, the, the, again, don't trust my memory. <laughs> call yeah, call or visit our website to find the nearest one to, close to you. Well, Frank Calderon, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. You heard that, folks. Please, if you have an old couch, don't let it sit in your front lawn so that when the flooding comes by inevitably and, you know, it's picks up and hits your car and then floats down the street and hits somebody else's car and starts causing a stink, um, please call 311 or go to the Miami-Dade County uh, website. Save yourself the fine. Uh, dispose of everything uh, as, as best as you can. Um, you're doing right by you. You're doing right by your community. Uh, and you're doing right by the, the, the broader uh, Miami-Dade County in South Florida. We're uh, handling uh, illegal dumping as best we can. We're trying to, to clean things up, make sure the strain, uh, storm drainage is, uh, is not clogged. So um, it's all about uh, uh, doing your work. If, if everyone individually uh, does what they can, then that inevitably is going to result in a, in a much uh, more impactful difference. Uh, so to that, I'll say you guys have a great week, uh, have a great day, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.